This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 3128, When Resistance Smacks You in the Face, by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. And I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator, reading to you every single day of the year with your daily dose of positivity. So let's get right to it as we optimize your life. When Resistance Smacks You in the Face, by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. As a writer, one of the most frightening sights I face is the blank page. It fills me with doubt, uncertainty, dread, sometimes a bit of panic, and creates an urge to run for any distraction. And I face this terror every day. Whether I'm writing an article or a book chapter, creating something new is not easy. I open up a new document and instantly want to go answer some emails or clean my kitchen, or read that long article on magician Ricky J. This is a question we all have to answer for ourselves. When you're faced with the resistance, what will keep you from running to distraction? There's no easy answer. Like many of you, I've tried just about everything. Nothing works every time because the best plans crumble when you're hit in the face by resistance. I'll share what helps me. Number one, Sit there and look inside yourself. Just because an urge arises to run doesn't mean you have to follow it. I'll feel the urge and then sit back and try not to take any action. I'll look inside and feel the urge, then I'll try to see what I'm afraid of. When I shine a light on it, it's not so bad. Number two, think about who you're helping. While resistance is scary, it's often not nearly as bad as the pain that someone else is facing. If you're creating something that will positively affect someone's life, then that's more important than the amount of fear you're facing. So think of that person and put their pain above yours. Number three, think about the gift of time. Time seems like such an endless commodity because we never see a gauge that's showing how much we have left but it's like reaching into a huge vat of cookies and pretending you'll never run out. One day, you'll feel around inside the vat and the cookies will be gone. Cookies, in this clumsy metaphor, are days in your life. Once you appreciate the limitedness of these cookies, you realize that you have to savor them and not waste them. Each one is precious. So make the most of it. Do you want to create something new or spend your remaining time doing email and social media? Number four, just get started. Usually all I need to do is get the ball rolling. I tell myself, just write one sentence. Usually that's something that's so easy I can't say no to it. So I do that and things often flow a lot easier. Number five, remove options. Cut off escape routes. Where do you like to run to? If it's email, put up a site blocker so you can't check email. Disconnect your router. Go somewhere that doesn't have internet. Or use a full screen distraction-free writing app. Only allow yourself to use one tab in the browser. You can't open more than one. Have someone monitor you or hold you accountable. Don't let yourself run. Number six, let yourself run. This is in direct contradiction to the previous tip, but as I said, not everything works all the time. Often, I'll open up a new document to start writing and then immediately want to go do something else, and I go do it. I'm not perfect. I let myself run to distraction, but I'm conscious of what I'm doing. And I know that I shouldn't do this for very long, so I only let myself do it for a few minutes. It's like giving yourself a bite or two of cake but not letting yourself gorge on the cake. It's okay to take a bite if you put the fork down right after. Sometimes the fearful mind just needs a bit of a break from the scariness, but don't let it hide forever. Number seven, go for a walk. I'll get up, walk around, sometimes even go outside and take a 10 minute walk. This walk is good because it gets me away from distraction and helps me think through what I want to write. Often, I'll come up with some good ideas on the walk and then be excited to get them on paper and the resistance will be gone. And number eight, talk to someone. If I'm struggling, I'll find someone to talk to and explain my problem. 
Often this act and the need to clarify it and state it succinctly helps me clarify it in my head. And sometimes the answer to whatever problem I'm facing becomes incredibly obvious once I've stated the problem out loud. I'll say it again. No one of these solutions will work all the time. But if we think of the struggle against resistance as a cage fight, think of these ideas as different modes of attack. When one doesn't work, switch to a different mode until one does work. Resistance will always be a tough opponent, but when it smacks you in the face, don't collapse. You have more in you than that. You just listened to the post titled, When Resistance Smacks You in the Face by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net and I'll be right back with my commentary. Being in control of my health means being super mindful of what I put in my body which is why I'm so excited to tell you all about Thorn. Thorn takes a personalized and scientific approach to health and wellness with their supplements. They manufacture all their supplements in the US using top-notch ingredients sourced globally. Plus, they team up with leading medical professionals to bring highly effective nutritional supplements to over 5 million customers, 47,000 healthcare pros, and 100 plus pro sports teams, including multiple US national teams. I got their product GI Relief, which has ingredients shown to help gastrointestinal discomfort, and it's helping me. And I particularly love that all the thorn supplements I checked, which were independently tested, were approved or even ranked as the lab's top choice. Give your body what it really needs with thorn. Go to thorn.fit slash optimal and use code optimal for 10% off your first order. That's T-H-O-R-N-E dot F-I-T slash optimal, code optimal for 10% off your first order thorn.fit slash optimal, code optimal. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not limited to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Thank you to Leo. When he was talking about running to distractions, it got me thinking about how much easier it is these days to get distracted in the first place. I don't wanna date myself, but back when I was starting college, there were no smartphones. We didn't have apps. So our distractions could come from the computer and internet or video games, movies, I guess even books and so on. But notifications weren't as pervasive back then. We weren't being dinged constantly with emails, well, maybe texts, but not as much. We'd actually have to log in to check our email. It's quite a different thing. And to me, it feels like we have to try harder to stay focused these days really make that effort to disconnect and to put our phone somewhere else. I can see why some really enjoy some time away from devices, a digital detox, if you will. I did do that a long time ago. I'm hoping to do one of those again soon. But like Leo said, sometimes we need that. We need a little break because we're not supposed to be on all the time. That'll just lead to burnout. So it is a balance and finding that balance is key. So hopefully you can find that balance today. Thank you for being here. I've only been able to keep doing this with you coming back to listen. Have a great rest of your day and I'll be back tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.